All right, welcome back everybody to episode two of the ultimate rebuilding series here on NBA 2K24. We are gonna be taking things off in the 1986 off season today. And before I get into the episode, I do wanna say two things. One, you should watch episode one. I explain how the series is gonna go. Really, in short, I do three seasons of video. So today it's gonna be the 87 season with the 86 off season, the 88 season, and then after the 89 season, the video will end and we will pick up from the 89 off season in episode three. We're gonna rebuild the Houston and Rockets today, a team that I absolutely fleeced for Michael Jordan in episode one. Quick spoiler from that, or it's kind of, I was gonna say small spoiler, but no, that's a big spoiler. So yeah, Michael Jordan is a clipper. And I want to give a shout out to G Money for that suggestion, saying that you should do the Rockets since you fleeced them hard in the episode one. And then also wanted to shout out Prince Diddy, who said in the future, I would import the major NBA players that are not in 2K, like Barkley and Reggie Miller, just adds to the series. And yeah, we are going to be doing that today. So for this off season, the best way we could do it is we're going to have Charles Barkley, who would be 22 going into this season, be a free agent. So he's going to appear with any team. He was in the 84 draft next year would be the 87 draft in that offseason when reggie miller was drafted so he'll end up being imported then as well i know rasheed wallace is in 2k you guys can let me know in the comments any other notable players you want to see throughout the series that aren't in 2k and yeah we are approaching the 1986 draft not the best brad daughtry was the number one pick at this time mark price is good you know got dennis rodman del curry ron harper and this houston Rockets team was one of the worst uh, last year, 29 and 53. They were the 10th seed in the Western Conference. They were the third worst team in the NBA. So let's just take a look of the team we are controlling. Joe Barry Carroll made a trade from the Clippers to Houston. He's 27 years old, seven foot tall, is the current best player. Two years, $1.8 million. That's how small these contracts are. That's how it was back then. We have Rodney McRae, 24 years old, third pick in the 83 draft solid player we have wayne tisdale or excuse me wayman tisdale who is the fifth pick in the 85 draft out of oklahoma craig elo there 24 like there is some young talent on this team michael cage is 24 jay humphreys is 23 elston turner 26 and edmund westfall who is one of those picks or uh, no never mind i thought he was one of those picks from the jordan trade but yeah this is a young team i think we will be able to build a championship contender by the 88 season 89 season and the lakers basically ran up episode one three peating in that video magic johnson winning the last three finals mvps beat us in the conference finals there we're staying in the western conference i'm definitely gonna look for revenge but look at this the lakers lose their second best player kareem abdul jabbar retires so does tiny archibald bob laner george johnson dan Issel retires on the nuggets okay he was a big part of their nuggets like playoff teams in episode one and kareem is going to the hall of fame tiny archibald gets his jersey retired by the kings bob laner by the pistons kareem by the bucks and by the Lakers. So here we're just going to have some uniforms and brand and uh, kind of uh, floor for the Milwaukee Bucks changing. That's it at the moment. League meetings. You know what? I'm going to do this. I think I was going to make minor rule changes. Like I didn't want to affect the past so much, but I think this is something that should be implemented in today's day and age. All defensive teams will be positionalist. It's kind of unfair that arguably the most important position defensively is the center spot and they only get two spots on the all defensive teams when forwards and guards get four. Rising Stars games being USA versus World is cool, but I'm going to keep it if it's still rookie sophomore. So please tell me the Rockets have their first round pick. Okay, they do. We have seven teams in the lottery at the moment. Imagine we just fell to seven. I would cry. And we don't fall to six. Is there a chance we fall to five? I feel like some teams have already moved up into the top four. Yep, we end up with the fifth overall pick. All right, could be better, could be worse. You have the Mavericks via Cleveland getting number one. You have the Spurs at two, Hawks at three. The Cavs have the Clippers pick at 22. So we'll definitely monitor the Clippers, who we kind of set up for some success. They were the team we did in episode one. Terry Cummings, Ralph Sampson was the guy we got from Houston. Michael Jordan, Norm Nixon, one of the best facilitators in the league. Ricky Pierce, one of the better sixth mans in the league. Yeah, and like Michael Jordan. It's incredible. So we do have William Murray as our head coach. I'll keep him around for now. And I'm going to have injuries on for episode two just to see the vibe of it. I didn't have them on in episode one. But I think it could definitely spice up the video a little bit, you know, and like probably see me rage a little bit too. And we're going to get Eric Lewis to be our team doctor. All right, so we are here with the 1986 draft. The mocks have us taking Will Mullen. I'm telling you, if Dennis Rodman is on the board, I will be taking him. That Sporting News is the only mock at this moment. Oh, you have Arvidas Sabonis too. 
He was 21 when he was drafted? Yeah, he was in the 86 draft, but he didn't come over until the 96 season. Brad Daughtry projected number one. All right, so I think we should be getting somebody that we will like in this class. This was, unfortunately, the Len Bias class as well, where he went second overall. I'm telling you, though, if Mark Price is available more on the clock, even like Jeff Hornacek, too. So Brad Daughtry goes number one. He was the number one pick to Cleveland at the time. And yeah, he's going to come in at an 80 overall at age 20. I also have Joe Barry Carroll, so I'm not really in the market for a center. Chuck Person goes number two. He was the fourth overall pick originally to Indiana. Number three, Atlanta takes Del Curry, obviously father of Steph Curry. He was the 15th overall pick by the Utah Jazz. The Seattle Supersonics take Kenny Walker with the fourth overall pick. He was the fifth overall pick by the New York Knicks. And then we are on the clock here at six. There's a ton of talent here. You got Ron Harper. You got Mark Price. You got Dennis Rodman. Jason Tatum. So Jeff Hornacek does have the highest warp, uh, like wins above replacement out of anybody in this class all time. But I'm going to go with Mark Price. I think underrated throughout his career in Cleveland. One of the better players, I think, of his generation. Really at his position. Like, not the top point guard ever. Like, obviously not better than Magic Johnson. But he was the 25th overall pick by Dallas. He was a four-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA member. He averaged 15 points and seven assists throughout his career. Ron Harper, though, was a five-time NBA champion. But yeah, I'm going to go with Mark Price here out of Georgia Tech to be our point guard for the future at the moment. He's going to be, yeah, like, he's basically a position of need as well. Like, small forward, we have McCray. At power forward, we have Tisdale. At center, we have Barry Carroll. So yeah, we're kind of looking for maybe a point guard if Craig Evo is the answer at the two, we will see. But yeah, I'm very happy with that Mark Price pick. We are on the clock here again at 26. Dennis Rodman was the pick after to Sacramento. The Bullets took Ron Harper at number seven. Arvita Sabonis went 12 to Denver. Scott Skiles, who I think still has the all-time assist record in a single game, goes 15 to Boston. And I'm going to be taking Nate McMillan here later in the first round. He actually has the fourth highest wins above replacement out of anybody in this class. He was the 30th overall pick by Seattle. He was the 1994 Steelers champion, two-time all-defensive team member. So we're getting a good defender here late in the first round. And I am definitely a fan of this draft class. Mark Price, 76 overall at the age of 22. Maybe not the best in the world of what we want to see, but we're going to sign him and McMillan. McMillan's a 72 overall, 6'5 point guard as well. Price is a little bit shorter at six foot. We're going to pick up the team option on Michael Cage. Jay Humphreys, a point guard. He did have verge 17 points last year. Now, he was very inefficient, though. I think we'll still bring him around or bring him back. We can always trade him. Akeem Olajuwon uh, gets his team option picked up. Same with Jordan Stockton and all those guys. Qualifying offers. Edmund Westphal or Lester Ramsey. I'll give Westphal the qualifying offer. I might resign it. Not even sure if this team has cap space because Magic Johnson's a free agent. Yeah, we don't really have cap. Wow, is Magic Johnson going to leave the Lakers? Could he sign with Utah? Charles Barkley, deal from the Nuggets, Bucks, Nets, Knicks, and Clippers. Adrian Dantley is here as well. Yeah, it's a pretty good free agency class. Clyde Drexler, unfortunately, I really can't afford any of these guys unless I pull off a trade. But this team really isn't deep enough. Do we have any future first round picks on the squad? So we do have the Clippers second in 88. We have the Bullets first round pick, top 10 protected in the 88 draft. But we can afford some good talent. I may look at John Long here or John Bagley if we wanted to move him to the two. Albert King is 26 years old. He shot 22 from three. Gene Banks. I, I would like somebody that could space the floor a tad bit. 33-year-old Bill Walton, James Donaldson. We had him in LA. I think I mm, it's either Albert King or John Long, but I like that Albert King is only 26 years old. Could I maybe front load a deal with him? That would be a nice pickup, I think. Let's see. Do we get Albert King? We do. Let's go. So I will probably renounce the rights on everybody else. We do have a 500 k trade exception from the Ralph Sampson deal. I'm going to look to sign Jerry Eves to the minimum and then probably just pick up some centers as well. We can get Scooter McRae on the minimum and then maybe at the center spot let's go after kent benson as well so are we able to get any of these guys benson goes to denver yeah maybe not do we get mccray or eaves okay we do get jerry eaves let's go and we get scooter mccray so uh magic johnson ended up signing with utah oh my goodness magic johnson is a utah jazz the lakers lose kareem abdul jabbar and magic johnson in the same offseason charles barkley goes to the milwaukee bucks adrian danley doesn't go to Utah since they signed Magic Johnson. He goes to New Jersey. Terry Cummings leaves the Clippers and he goes to the Pacers. Clyde Drexler stays in Portland. Uh, Jeff Ruland goes to the Cavs from Washington. Buck Williams goes to Denver from New Jersey. Dennis Johnson stays in Boston. Daryl Griffith is going to stay with the Utah Jazz. So they bring back Griffith and bring in MJ. Magic Johnson, MJ. I gotta stop doing that. Larry Nance stay with the Suns. I kind of wanted him on my team at some point. 
You got Doc Rivers, Tom Chambers, Bill Walton. Joe Barry Carroll is the highest overall at an 84. Then it's McRae, King, Tisdale, Humphreys, Elo, Gage, Price, etc. I don't know if this team is going to make the playoffs next year. I'm fine either way with whatever happens. Okay, so I did download the draft class. I won't have to import Reggie Miller. I'd made the mistake of not importing Barkley in the previous video. But yeah, we downloaded a draft class that has Reggie Miller in it. This is a loaded draft class, man. I should have maybe tanked this year because you got Reggie Miller, Scottie Pippen, David Robinson. The 1987 draft class was really good. You have one of the best passers of all time, Mark Jackson. You have Kevin Johnson. You have Horace Grant in this class. Yeah, it's a very good draft class for sure. So I definitely want to start Mark Price. We can maybe have Craig Elo start at the shooting guard spot. We'll have Albert King at the three, Tizzle at the four, Barry Carroll at the five. I guess... You know what? I'm going to have King come off the bench because I do want McCray there. We'll have Jay Humphreys, who was our point guard last year. We'll have Michael Cage, who was a power forward. And then I think instead of Jerry Eves, I'd rather just give Nate McMillan some playing time. So McMillan could probably play like 15 minutes. This is a good bench in my opinion. We can go 30 to Tisdale. We can go probably 32 to McCray. And then probably do four more to maybe Elo there. Or instead of giving 32 to McCray, we could do 32 to Barry Carroll, who is our best player at the moment. Under our head coach... William Murray, two and a half star pace in space. He's a seven seconds guy, uh, still two and a half stars. All right, so the first game of the season is on the road against Dallas, and we picked up a three game L. Mark Aguirre had 28 points. Orlando Bla uh, Blackman, excuse me, had 18 points. Charles Oakley, zero points and 12 rebounds shot over. <laughs> Nice. Uh, Joe Barry Carroll had 22 and 5, 11 for 18. He had four turnovers. Mark Price, 16 and 9, with three turnovers in his NBA debut. Jay Humphreys had 11 assists for the backup point guard spot. That is kind of incredible. Home game against the Jazz. I feel like we're going to lose this one. Yeah, with Magic Johnson there at the helm. He had 25, 15, and 9. So good. Joe Barry Carroll, four rebounds. Is he not much of a rebounder for somebody that's seven foot tall? Uh, Mark Price had 11 assists, but shot horribly in his second career game. Home game against the Suns. We do pick up our first win here by nine. Joe Barry Carroll with 23. Jay Humphreys with 18. Rodney McCray with 16. Albert King, or excuse me, uh, yeah, Albert King with 12 and 8. Tisdale had 12 rebounds. Mark Price had six assists, three turnovers, and two steals. Damn, Wayman Tisdale, six to eight week ankle injury. He was playing well. Maybe our best rebounder at nine and night because Joe Barry Carroll, seven and a half, that was still solid. We are seven and nine to start the year through 16 games. Our leading scorer has been Joe Barry Carroll. Mark Price as a rookie. 12 points and 7 assists. 47% true shooting percentage. Our analytics a thing in the 80s? I don't know. Albert King, 12 and 5. Has not missed a 3 yet. Well, he's taken just one. Yeah, Tisdale just got hurt. Craig Elo shooting... <laughs> thousand percent from three or hundred percent but yeah he's only taken one three as well jay humphrey's averaging five assists off the bench Nick mcmillan four and a half points two and a half assists pretty poor efficiency as a rookie all right i am getting a lot of trade offers and i definitely have to think about some of them so currently right now we are the eight seed oh my god the west is that bad we're 16 and 24 and we're on our way to making the playoffs, which is not something I currently want to do at the moment. Um, if this is a studded class, I'm not going to win it all this year. Joe Barry Carroll might be in the last year of his full on deal. So we could look to move him. Rodney McRae has been a little bit disappointing as well. So you know what? Before we look into that right now, I do want to just see the award races. You got Magic Johnson, Mark Aguirre, Moses Malone, Mike Bird, Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah, these are like the five best players in the league. Where is MJ, man? Is he going to take that step? Kenny Walker, number one in rookie of the year. Mark Price is number three, averaging seven assists a night. 31% three-point percentage, but still 47% true shooting. We do have Jay Humphreys as potential sixth man of the year. He's shooting 43% from the field, 24 from three. The bar was just that low then. Patrick Ewing just a beast on Sacramento. There's Ralph Sampson for Depoy. Clyde Drexler, maybe most improved in Portland. And we all know that they had the Kia Clutch player back in 1987. So let me just triple check. I have my first round pick, right? Okay, we do. Now, if we take a look at the salary cap breakdown next year, Joe Barry Carroll's probably going to opt out. So we could look to move him. I could look to move as well Craig Elo. We could look to move Rodney McRae also. All right, I am going to do this trade. I think Joe Barry Carroll would become a free agent. We're going to move him and Rodney McRae for Kelly Chupaka. 18 points per game, 50% from the field, 27 years old, and does make less per year uh, than Joe Barry Carroll or 971K, um, a little bit more. But Carroll would make more in free agency. And we're getting William Bedford as well. Not a bad center, just can give us some depth. He's 24 years old. He's also under contract for the next four seasons. And it only goes up to five fifty, like uh, five hundred. And $55,000 or $53,000. So it's not bad. We're going to make this trade. I do hope it makes us a little bit worse. So we can maybe 
tank for some of these top guys in the draft. I mean, I would love David Robinson. He would be the guy for us. Kevin Johnson, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably still draft him, even though we do have Mark Pierce, but or excuse me, Mark Price. But yeah, it's really David Robinson, Reggie Miller, or Scottie Pippen is one of the three players I want to get. So we maybe need to lose a little bit more games. And let's hope we can do just that. Michael Cage left knee tendonitis six to eight weeks. It helps the tank. And then Albert King, right knee tendonitis, four to six weeks. Damn, Wayman Tisdale breaks his right hand. His second like major injury this year. He's probably gonna be out for the remainder of the year. We're getting all these injuries. Well, I hope they're happening now and they don't happen when I try to do well in a few years. Yeah, the contract extension deadline, we are 21 and 42. So the tank is working out. We did fall out of the playoff picture. That's where I wanna be. And if I can't get like uh, the pick that lands there, I have the assets to trade up for sure. How are the Clippers doing now that we are not on their team? Oh my God, they're 22 and 37. How? With Michael Jordan and Ralph Sampson, I know you let Terry Cummings walk, but MJ, you really gonna let that happen to you? Come on. And I guess to add insult to injury, Mark Price, he's gonna be out for the year, six to eight weeks with an ankle sprain. Damn. Magic Johnson wins MVP in his first year in Utah. Kenny Walker is your rookie of the year. Sean Erickson wins six man of the year. Kim Olajuwon wins Depoy in Chicago, man. He has been a beast for them. They took, uh, yeah, Kim number one over MJ, even though MJ didn't go number one in that draft. Anyway, Brad Nelson is your coach of the year. Jerome Kersey is your most improved player for the Lakers. On the first team, you got Magic Johnson, Clyde Drexler, Charles Barkley, Larry Bird, and Akeem Olajuwon. Second team, you have MJ who ruptured his right Achilles. No. Well, Magic Johnson is still the best player in the NBA. Isaiah Thomas, Karl Malone, and Dominique Wilkins. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah, they drafted Karl Malone number one overall. And the Dominique Wilkins, Atlanta's good. Seattle Supersonics, Jack Sigma is on all NBA second team. Then you have Alex English, John Stockton, Clark Kellogg, Mark Aguirre, and Patrick Ewing. I had a chance to trade for Kellogg in the Joe Barry Carroll deal, but I ended up going with Chupaka. We got Akeem, Patrick Ewing, Jack Sigma, Ralph Sampson, and Larry Nance on all teams at the first team. Four centers with the new rules. And then you have Moses Malone, Sidney Moncrief, Tree Rollins, Xavier McDaniel, and Clyde Drexler there. Mark Price is on all rookie first team. And we did not make the playoffs to no surprise. The uh, Houston Rockets ended up with the second worst record in the NBA, which is good. Um, or no, yeah, second worst record in the NBA. I think looking at these stats and who's going to be back next year, I think Ch Ch Kelly Chupica, Chupaka, wow, it's going to be annoying to say his name, uh, KT, he's going to be the starting small forward penciled in for next year for sure, as he's still only 28 years old, like in his prime, you know? And then we have Albert King, who I think would be a nice sixth man. Also don't mind starting him at the two. So it depends on maybe who we get this offseason. For now, Mark Price starting point guard, unless we draft somebody, maybe it's Kevin Johnson, maybe I sign or trade for somebody. But right now, point guard, Tisdale, power forward. Looking for that center. I mean, if I win the lottery, I would love David Robinson to add to him to this team. Craig Elo's also a free agent, so I would like to bring him back. Jay Humphreys, free agent as well. Good free throw shooter, good passer off the bench. I would like for him to be the backup point guard because I don't know if Nate McMillan could be that guy for us because we only have two more years to win a championship with this team. So round one, let's see if there's any upsets here in the 1987 playoffs. It's best of five still. Mavericks win in three. Wow, everybody won in three on the Western side. Kings with Patrick Ewing. I guess that's technically an upset. They beat the Denver Nuggets. Yep. Basically, Patrick, uh, Patrick Ewing, Eddie Johnson, Larry Drew, Ricky Green. Good team. Portland wins in three. Lakers win in three. The Pistons won in four. Sixers won in five. Pacers won in four. And then the Celtics won in four. So now we got a best of seven series. We got Larry Bird and Dennis Johnson and Kevin McHale. It's such a good team in Boston, man. Going up against Indiana. Can Terry Cummings pull off the upset? I'm not really sure. Detroit with Isaiah Thomas and Bill Lambeer seem like they're on a collision course with the Celtics. Sixers do have Joey Serving and Moses Malone still. Murray's cheeks as well. And then you have Dallas, the one seed. They were the best team in the NBA on paper with Mark Aguirre, Orlando Blackman, Derek Harper. So we'll see. We'll see. And they had the number one overall pick, Brad Daughtry from the Cavs. So shout out to Cleveland making the playoffs, even though they didn't even have their number one pick last year. And then we got the Lakers versus Portland. That's the Lakers with no Magic Johnson, but still have James Worthy, Michael Cooper, Jamal Wilkes, and the Portland Trailblazers are pretty good with Michael Thompson, and Clyde Drexler. Oh my God. They have Clyde Drexler and John Stockton. Yeah, the Jazz with Magic Johnson ended up getting swept in round one. So let's see who advances here to the conference finals. It's going to be the Trailblazers versus the Mavericks and the Sixers upset the Pistons and the Pacers upset the Celtics. So I said that both those teams, the Pistons and Celtics, were on a collision course, and neither of them advanced. The Sixers blew them out in Game 7. Moses Malone was just that dude. And then you have Dallas versus Portland. So Portland swept LA. I do think on paper, though, I'd probably rather have Portland. Is James Worthy? Is he that guy? He's good. He's good. Don't get me wrong. So now we got 
Dallas versus Portland, Philly versus Indiana in the conference finals, and you're going to have Moses Malone going up against Mark Aguirre in the 1987 NBA Finals. Brad Daughtry could win a finals in his rookie season. We'll see if Julius Irving can get one on the way out at 37 years old. Moses Malone is 32. So this could be like the end of the Sixers championship window. Let's see who wins it all. And the Sixers do win in five. Moses Malone, who averaged 31 and 16 on 65% field goal shooting is your finals MVP. I mean, dude, he was so good. He was him before him was even a thing. Here are the retirements. No huge names there, which is good. We like to see that. Here are the historical changes, though. The top three picks are done via random weighted draw. Remaining lotto picks are determined by team record. The Knicks, the Bulls, the Cavs are going to have uniform changes as well as the Bullets. And the Bullets are getting changed from the Washington Bullets to the Washington Bullets. I, I, okay. I'm not really sure about that. But yeah, let's see kind of these go into effect now. And here we go. Draft lottery with the second pick. Come on, give me number one. I want David Robinson so badly. It's so weird only having seven teams in the lottery. Please don't give me four. No. Oh my God. We just dropped from pick two to four. All right. So yeah, that follows me out of Reggie Miller. Scottie Pippen and David Robinson. Nice. So the number one pick is the Phoenix, or the Phoenix Suns. They were the worst team as well, and they stayed at one. You have the Nets at two, and then you have the Spurs via the... Or no, the Celtics via the Spurs. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. They have Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Dennis Johnson, and they're about to add the third overall pick in the draft. That is absurd. So we are here on the NBA draft night. I think I have to trade up. I don't know what it would cost to get David Robinson to houston but could we throw a godfather offer at number one i don't know if there's any talent i would throw in here i mean william bedford who we got in that trade with joe barry carroll last year i would give up don't really want to give up any of these guys do i have any future picks i have pick 32 which is a star value and i would throw in the bullets pick so i am willing to give up pick four william bedford a center who's only 24 years old seven footer Pick 32, well, this isn't 32 because there's some 30 teams, but the second pick in the second round, you know what I mean, and then a top 10 bullets pick next year in exchange for number one, and they agree to that. Okay, I make the big move that we needed to make to really try to be a championship team either this year or next year, and we just landed David Robinson, the Admiral, out of Navy to the Houston Rockets. Now, David Robinson did not come over till technically his third year in the NBA. That like his rookie season was 1990. So I'm hoping there isn't like a Euro stash thing to this because I would hate that because then I would probably have to move Robinson because I don't have that long to win a championship. Reggie Miller ends up going to New Jersey from UCLA and Kevin Johnson goes three to Boston. They pass on Scottie Pippen. So the Suns traded down, got those assets and took Scottie Pippen. Honestly, it worked out for them. I think it worked out for them. I'm surprised Boston did not want Scottie Pippen. Olden Pauly Nice goes number five. Kenny the Jet Smith goes number six. The Bulls are taking Mark Jackson out of St. John's. And then Reggie Williams goes to Seattle. Golden State takes Reggie Lewis. Winston Garland next. And then there's Dennis Hobson. So this was basically the rest of the draft. Any notable names? Muggsy Bogues goes number 14 to Cleveland. Horace Grant goes to the Pacers at 16. Nice addition for them. And yeah, let's sign David Robinson. He's going to be playing for us right away. So team player options. Let's pick up the option on Humphreys, Tisdale, and Michael Cage. McMillan, I think I'm going to let him walk just because there's no point in having him and Humphreys. And maybe I can get him back for even a cheaper price. It looks like David Thompson's a free agent. And I'm not going to give these guys the qualifying offers at all. So let's just see what free agency looks like. Do we even have cap space? James Worthy's there. No, we don't have cap space, unfortunately. But like, yeah, Worthy or Dominique Wilkins would have been sick. I mean, next year we have probably maybe Humphreys starts over price at that point. We'll see though. But we're good at point guard. I would like to bring back Craig Elo. We have Chupaka at the three. King at the six-man spot, Tisdale at the four, and David freaking Robinson at the five. Let's go, man. All right, so we are back here. It is a new day for me, obviously, and we're pretty much just going to wrap up free agency. Anybody sign yet? No, because we're only on day one, but I did offer Craig Elo a deal to come back, so we are going to get him back on a three-year deal. Probably still going to be my starting shooting guard next year for sure. James Worthy stays with the Lakers. Dominique Wilkins goes to Cleveland, so they had a nice duo of Carl Malone and Dominique Wilkins, and then Wilkins ends up going to Cleveland. Cleveland in his age 28 season. Alex English leaves Denver and he goes to the Bullets. Robert Parrish stays in Boston. George Irvin stays in San Antonio. Lambeer stays 
in Detroit. Fat Lever leaves Portland and he joins the Philadelphia 76ers. So we have seen some notable kind of changes here. We don't have that many roster spots filled up. So I'm just going to kind of here or kind of go around and just sign a bunch of minimum deals. Nothing too crazy. So for year two in the 1988 season, Koji Puka does not progress. He's an 85. I think this team is still solid enough to get maybe like a seventh or eighth seed in the western conference but i don't think it's anything too crazy after that maybe we're better off like tanking again because i'm telling you man it is tough to build some really good rosters in this short amount of time when you're in the 80s like for 1987 the salary cap isn't big there isn't that many draft picks or at least draft picks in the lottery we're coming up on the 1988 draft in which i believe rod strickland is the best player in this class yeah you got danny manning as well mitch richmond you could say hersey hawkins rex chapman rick smith yeah like it's not a class to be really tanking your season for so Mark Price is up to an 80 overall though, which is good to see. So I think he will start over Jay Humphreys, but Jay Humphreys will definitely come off the bench as the sixth man. And we'll have Albert King, Michael Cage, and then I guess Theo Harper. Yeah, like the ninth man spot is going to be kind of weak. I may go for, or I may just opt for some more size and go Tom uh, Piotrowski, who I did sign for like the minimum towards the end of free agency. He's going to get 12 minutes. That's fine with the bench, maybe 34 to the Admiral. Sure. Uh, let's go 30 to Tisdale. I would like to go 34 to Chupaka. And then maybe we'll go one west to King, Cage, and Humphreys. And I can go pretty much three more to Craig Elo. System proficiency uh, under William Murray who could be in his final year as the Rockets head coach. He does have good ratings though, um, but yeah, for seven seconds, maybe this isn't the greatest team fit ever. Game one against the Sacramento Kings at home, we ended up losing by two. Craig Ewell had 23. Robinson had 23, seven and six. He had five blocks in his NBA debut. 23 assists come on between Mark Price and Jay Humphreys. We lost in overtime, but Patrick Ewing and Eddie Johnson just kind of won it for them. We got a road game against the Hawks in which we end up winning by five. This is the Hawks team without Dominique Wilkins. That was Mark Price, 22 and eight, man. Maybe this could be a big sophomore year for Mark Price. We end up losing by 20 to Indiana. Otis Birdsong had 30. Terry Cummings had 20. Terry Porter had 20 and 11. Mark Price, ooh, shot six for 20. Yuck. Road game against the Cavs. We end up beating them by four. Dominique Wilkins had 35. It was not enough because the Admiral, 31, 14, four and five. Yeah, I'm glad I traded up for that number one pick. Not many times I could beat Magic Johnson in this video, so I kind of want to just hop in, maybe see what we're doing against them right now. How old is Magic Johnson? He's 28 still. Oh, and he's not going to retire early in this for obvious reasons. I feel like Mark Price and David Robinson would just be a mean uh, point guard center duo for sure. So yeah, we got currently Jay Humphreys, and I kind of just want to put in the starters. Kind of just wanted to see what this team is rocking with. We got David Robinson. We got Jay Humphreys, who's going to pull up right there. He's going to miss that jumper, but David Robinson is right there on the what he like how does he miss that he's got 23 points 13 rebounds and three assists as uh hopson knocks down that jumper right in front of chupaka's face tisdale giving chupaka a screen chupaka's gonna miss that unfortunately all right well good to know <laughs> i'm not gonna hit these jump shots right away dale griffith with the ball mark price does look tiny out there i mean he is six foot tall which is what four inches bigger than what i am but yeah he just looks tiny out there david robinson picks up his 14th rebound chupaka with the ball he's gonna get inside euro step and he ends up getting it to go we're up by what 16 right now i just need like david robinson not to get hurt this year because i think he alone can carry us to the playoffs magic johnson's got no jumper what they called a foul on that magic johnson just getting a sweep Oh, it was an offensive foul? Okay, I guess I'll take that. But Chupaka ends up missing the first free throw. Man, maybe I end up trading him at the deadline though because I think he is a free agent at the end of the year. And if he's not like that top end guy like that number two that i traded him for there's no point in just letting him walk to free agency and really hindering my my chances at maybe signing somebody else over there so yeah maybe that could be something magic johnson no way yeah i was gonna say uh robinson picks up his 15th rebound uh theo harper with the ball not sure why we got the bench in now i guess because we are up by a decent amount i don't know who this is guarding uh david robinson but why can't i back him down with ease come on david robinson please get that to go thank you they have bill walton there in utah oh david robinson picks up the steal jay humphrey Come on, run the floor, man. Run the floor. Let's see what you can do. Spin move inside. Kick that out to Tarper. And he's going to break that jumper. Magic Johnson with the long jumper. That is good. He knocks that down. All right. I mean, it's still a 17-point game. Craig Evo's got 15 points, which is nice to see. It's annoying that they kind of took out the start or kind of the players that I wanted to... Uh, to play here like Craig Evo, Mark Price, but it's fine. You know what? This is nice that we are going to win this game. Kick it to Michael Cage inside. Who goes up there? What the hand? Uh, no good. All right, Jay Humphreys outrun Magic Johnson. I kind of want to go right at him, but I feel like it's not going to end well. 
So David Robinson on, oh my God, Bill Walton. He is just manhandling him, but he can't finish. What the? Craig Evo might have fouled out, unfortunately. Robinson picks up his fifth, or excuse me, 16th rebound. That is absurd. Uh, Kelly Chup Chupaca find Harper inside, and Harper's gonna go up and get that to go. Nice find there from Chupaca. Oh, Robinson inside, gets two blocks. This guy is so good, make that three blocks. Oh my god, I'm so glad I trade up for David Robinson, make that four blocks in one possession. Oh no, oh no, and they end up getting an N1 out of it. Damn, what a defensive possession there from David Robinson, who would have just picked up four blocks. I'm not sure how many he already had going into that possession. Yep, he might have had, already had four, so he's got eight blocks in this game. Albert King's got 11 rebounds. That's nice to see. He's getting around Magic Johnson with ease. All right, that was way too easy. Yeah, what a performance there from David Robinson. 25, 16, 4, 2, and 8. Wow. All right, so maybe this is going to be a solid year for the Houston Rockets like that. They definitely gave me confidence. We came back here, nice 13-point victory over the uh, Blazers there, especially like a great fourth quarter. There's Kelly Chupaka. He heard me, man. Drops 31 there. Mark Price with 25 and 9. Home game here against Dallas, who are 4-0 and and were the best team in the Western Conference last year. Ah, and we end up losing to them. I mean, that is a very good team. Very well balanced. Home game against Denver. We pick up the win. Man, Jay Humphreys is also pretty good. Now, just kind of looking at our free agents at the end of the year, we may have a ton. We got Michael Cage. We got Jay Humphreys. Jeez. We got Kelly Chupaka as well. So we got some notable guys that are going to be hitting free agency. Looking at the upcoming free agents, you have Akeem Olajuwon, who I believe will be restricted, though. I don't know if that is still a thing, though, in the 80s. You got Moses Malone, who will be 33. You got Isaiah Thomas, Mark Aguirre, Patrick Ewing, Sidney Moncrief. It's a good class. John Stockton as well. If we take a look at the contract extensions, it looks like Chupaka wants to test free agency. All right, we're going to see where we are at the deadline, and I think we will have some big decisions to make. Oh, Craig Ewell, left knee tendonitis. He's going to be out six to eight weeks. That stinks losing our starting shooting guard. All right, we've unfortunately lost four in a row leading up to the trade deadline, which is not going to be great confidence we are 22 and 18 though ah oh, which is solid man currently in the western conference we sit as the four seed i think we should st still be buyers i'm just not sure what i want to do we're 12 and 7 on the road but we're 10 and 11 at home kelly chapaka refuses to resign i mean he's having a good year but i think i would look to see and what i can get for him all right i have no idea if we could pull this trade off but i would be giving the Suns. we're calling them up you give me Larry Nance and Scottie Pippen. I give you Kelly Chapaka. I give you Jay Humphreys. And I give you my unprotected first round pick in this year's draft. I don't know why it's got good trade value, but maybe picks just at this time do. And you'd give me Scottie Pippen and Larry Nance. Would they agree to this trade? No, they're not going to move Scottie Pippen, unfortunately. All right, I wonder if I can get Jeff Malone from the Washington Bullets and Clark Kellogg, who are both under contract going forward. And I'd be giving up Kelly Chapaka and Jay Humphreys. Like, Jay Humphreys would be a star in a starting role. But I kind of like Mark Price still. I'll go over the stats and everything in a little bit and Mark Price is definitely on his way to developing into a very good point guard. So let's see, would they do this trade straight up? They would want my first round pick in 1992. You would give me Jay Vincent, which honestly gives me more depth, which you know what, I will take. I'll give up that first round pick in four years from now, which I didn't know. Yeah, we're, we're giving up that weight of a first and Dwayne Farmer as well. So we make this massive blockbuster trade with the Washington Bullets. Going into the season or at this point, Clark Kellogg will now be our leading scorer. David Robinson's averaging 17, 11, and 4, and 3.3 blocks as a goddamn rookie. Mark Price is averaging 15 and 8, 46 from 3. He's like, yeah, 91 from the line. He's under contract for the next like two seasons, so I was always going to move Jay Humphreys over him. I think getting Jeff Malone is a nice pickup as well. He's under contract for the next four years, and, could, and he's only 26 years old. Jay Vincent will be a free agent at the end of the year. I don't think there would be any options. I don't even think those were a thing then but yeah we could look to bring him back if we do get bird rights on him and it keeps some of our other depth as well so like now i don't need to play theo harper or uh piotrowski so like the team is going to be mark price craig elo uh clark kellogg Way uh wayman tisdale david robinson then we have albert king jeff malone uh shout out to uh suits if you watch that jeff malone uh jay vinson and michael cage there system proficiency is two and a half stars seven seconds or less i do think that we got better as a team don't know if we can do any contract extensions at the moment we can't for the 1988 season akim olajuwon is the front runner to win mvp at the moment but david robinson as a rookie is number four you also have carmel on the hawks there as well you got david robinson leading the way for rookie of the year even though reggie miller on the new jersey nets is averaging 25 points as a rookie okay get out of here that's insane terry porter good facilitator is up there for six man of the year jay humphreys was there as well a lot of point guards that are good passers uh defensive player of the year david robinson's number two but akim olajuwon 
Olajuwon, maybe the best player in the NBA, is number one. Scott Skiles is number one there for most improved. Uh, he was drafted a few years ago as well. Bernard King for Clutch Player of the Year. So let's see how the second half of the season unfolds. Hopefully we could still maintain a good playoff spot. I mean, the Mavericks are really good and we just lost to them by 20, but we are winning more games now, 26 and 20. Let's just hope nobody gets hurt. I didn't even realize Vinny Del Negro and Scott Brooks were in this draft class as well. Shout out to those coaches. I think Brian Shaw is also in this class as well. Wow, a lot of former uh, or a lot of future coaches in the NBA that were in this draft class in 1988. All right, we are playing phenomenal. Wayne Tisdale is out one to two weeks. Could be worse. We are 41 and 23, boys. We are actually doing very well right now. David Robinson, Clark Kellogg, Mark Price. Man, Mark Price is him already. If we take a look at the playoff picture, we're currently the three seed in the Western Conference. Hopefully we can lock that seed up. I don't know if there were any like major trades in the NBA. I think like our trade was the really big one. Yeah, like just kind of in the save alone. Look at all these trades, or at least in the last two years, you could see. And pretty much before the season ends up here, the league leaders, Dominique Wilkins leading the NBA in scoring with Dantley, Ewing, Jervin, um, and then Reggie Miller as a rookie there at number five. Rebounds per game. Oh my God, Akeem Olajuwon's one. He's a four rebound lead over number two buck williams uh you have ennis watley there number one in assists per game mark bryce is there at number six steals per game mj at number one whose scoring has kind of gone down interesting career trajectory for mj in this and david robinson as a rookie leading the nba in blocks per game we did end the season on two L's, but hey, 50 wins for this team. I will take that. Akeem Olajuwon wins MVP. David Robinson of the Houston Rockets gets Rookie of the Year. Terry Porter, Sixth Man of the Year in Indiana. Man, this guy should definitely be starting. Akeem Olajuwon gets Depoy. Terry Porter, most improved. So it's pretty much just been the Olajuwon Porter show. Brad Nelson of the Mavericks, Coach of the Year. Herbert Buford of the Blazers, Executive of the Year. All NBA first team, you have Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, Carl Malone, Larry Bird, and Akeem Olajuwon. Second team, Michael Jordan does still make it i mean he averaged 2.2 steals i think he went on like an insane end to the season i feel like his points per game went up a little bit yeah when i think i called him out 43 31 25 34 42 and a 47 point performance it's very good. You have Drexler, Dominique, Mark Aguirre, and Pat Ewing on all NBA second team. And David Robinson as a rookie with Reggie Miller, who's a rookie as well. Charles Barkley, Adrian Dantley, and Terry Porter on all NBA third team. Charles Barkley, very solid. There's David Robinson on all defensive first team. How good is Xavier McDaniel? He's solid, man. He really is. And then obviously David Robinson is going to be on all rookie first team. So we are going to be taking on the LA Clippers. Oh yeah, this is when this is going to happen. We're taking on the team that we controlled in the episode one. I mean, they don't have Terry Cummings anymore. They have Kenny the Jet Smith. They have Travis Hunter, not the Colorado receiver corner. Uh, Ralph Sampson, James Donaldson. I feel like we can beat them. I feel like we're the better team, even though they do have Michael Jordan. We do have some minor injuries right now with Jay Vinson and Mark Price. But for the playoffs, I think... We can stick with this, like, nine-man rotation is perfect. I think Jay Vincent, while he's hurt, can get a little bit less minutes per game. I think Jeff Malone can stay at 22. I think Albert King, man, is pretty good. I might give him, like, 26, though. Michael Cage can get 15 minutes a night. And then I would like to give, honestly, maybe King 28, Tisdale 25, 34 to Kellogg, 37 to Robinson, 30 to Elo, and then 35 to Mark Price. So, game one against the LA Clippers. Price is fully healthy. We pick up the victory by five points. Kellogg and Albert King, who's coming off the bench, combined for 55 points. Robinson had five blocks in his playoff debut. Game number two, we pick up the victory by 26 points. Clark Kellogg, 31, 10, and four. I don't think we would have gotten that out of Kelly Chupaka. Game number three, we pick up a 3-0 victory, and I forget. Yeah, it's best of five, so we advance. Sorry, Mike. Michael Jordan, it's another round one exit for you. Mark Price, 24 and 11. Five turnovers, but perfect from the line. Kellogg, double-double. David Robinson, double-double. We're taking on Portland, though. This is a good team. Stockton, Drexler, Calvin Nat, Kenny Carr, Michael Thompson, Jim Paxson off the bench. Darnell Valentine, it's a good team, man. You got Sacramento versus Utah. And Utah with Magic Johnson beat Mark Aguirre. And the Dallas Mavericks. That is a huge upset. They got Dennis Rodman there in Sacramento. Dennis Rodman and Patrick Ewing in the front court is nasty. We know what Utah has to offer. You have Atlanta with no more Dominique Wilkins advancing to round two. Byron Scott, very good player. Uh, going up against Boston, though, who is a juggernaut. And then you have Chicago with Akeem Olajuwon. Uh, maybe this is their time now. And Chris Mullen as well. Shout out St. John's. Uh, going up against Cleveland, who do have... 
Dominique Wilkins. So game one against Portland, I do think that they are the better team, but we win game one by 21 points. Clyde Drexler and John Stockton combined for 46. Did not matter because David Robinson and Jeff Malone combined for 53. 13 assists for Mark Price, five blocks for David Robinson, and we are up 1-0. We do end up losing our first playoff game here with an abysmal fourth quarter, man. Oh, that is just brutal. Double-double for Kellogg and Robinson. Robinson is averaging 3.8 blocks in the playoffs. Game number three, Albert King has a sore left ankle, but he's fine. We end up losing this game by eight points at home in Houston. Mark Price with 26 and eight. David Robinson with 25 and 14. Kellogg at six assists. Albert King, three for 11 from the field. Game number four, we pick up the victory. Let's go. We blow them out in Houston. That is a huge win. Mark Price, 25 and 14. Kellogg, 15 and 11. Robinson, 15 and 10. We're staying alive, man. Game number five, Robinson has a sprain right ankle. He could play through it, but we end up losing by three. Drexler goes off in game five for 41, six, seven, and four. Good Lord. Does not even hit a single three either. So 41 points on zero threes is just that impressive. Mark Price, 23 and five and two steals. He's been so good for us in the playoffs, but we are now down three games to two. Jeff Malone shot one for seven, went 10 for 10 from the line. Are we going to lose in six? No, we forced a game seven. We beat him by 15 at home. Mark Price, man. He is so good. Drexler had 33. was not enough. Nobody else has advanced at the moment. So let's see if anybody does. I don't even think. We might have four game sevens upon us. So let's see here. Game seven of the 1988 playoffs. This is perfect for me. Even if I do lose, I think we're on the right path to possibly winning a championship next year. And I haven't won one yet. So I'd like to win my first. But we might not have to wait till next year. Oh my God. Don't choke it. Don't choke it. No. No, oh my goodness, we win by one. I thought we were going to choke that, but we end up winning. Mark Price, 21, 11, and four steals. David Robinson at zero blocks, but 17, 11, and five. And we are advancing to the Western Conference Finals to take on the Kings. Every single series went into seven games. The Kings ended up winning by 11 over Utah on the backs of Vassal Thompson and Patrick Ewing. Boston beat Atlanta in seven. Five-point victory because of Larry Bird. And then Cleveland. A seven seed is in the conference finals. Beats Akeem Olajuwon by four there with Jeff Rulon dropping 35 and 13. So here we go. Houston, Sacramento, Boston, Cleveland. Game one against the Kings. We end up winning. We are the higher seed, man. Wayman Tisdale with a random 20 piece. Okay. David Robinson with 21, 18, and four. Mark Price, nine assists. Only took two shots because he fouled out. All right. Cleveland, I mean... If perfect world, it's us versus Cleveland because I don't want to face Boston. Game two, we do win by 18. Clark Kellogg, 17 rebounds out of him. Wow. 10 assists for Mark Price. Only one block for Robinson, but a double-double. Boston tied it up 1-1. Game three in Sacramento, we do end up uh, losing this one by two points. Damn, we were three points away from being up 3-0. Albert King with 28 points in 26 minutes. Robinson had a phenomenal performance. Game number four, are we going to go up 3-1 to one or are they going to tie it up? We're up 3-1, to one, boys. We end up having a monster defensive performance. We win 92-83. 11 assists for Mark Price. He's averaging 9.2 in the playoffs. And there's they're tied up 2-2 on the Eastern Conference side. And guys... In year two, with David Robinson, Mark Price, and everybody else, we are in the NBA Finals, man. Albert King off the bench, huge. Are we taking on Cleveland or Boston? We're taking on somebody who wins game seven, and it's Boston. No. Oh, Cleveland was up three games to two. In game six, they lost by three. And in game seven, they lost by six. I'd be pissed. So taking a look here at the playoff stats, we can see that our leading scorer has been David Robinson, followed by uh, Clark Kellogg, Mark Price, Albert King. Wow, we have a bunch of guys in double figures, which is good to see. Three guys above, one steal a night as well. Two guys above, one block a night. Michael Cage, really good shot blocker. All right, taking on Boston, man, who have Dennis Johnson, Scott Skiles, one of the better facilitators in the NBA right now. Larry Bird, Cedric Maxwell, Robert Parrish, uh, Eugene Grady. Okay, all right. I'm just really scared of Larry Bird, who's 31 years old, but he's one of the best players in the NBA right now. Game one against Boston, we ended up losing by 11. Larry Bird with 32. Robert Parrish, who's 34. It's going up against David Robinson. Damn. Price had a double-double. Him and Robinson shot 8 for 26. Yuck. Game 2. We go down 2-0. Oh, man. I really wanted to face Cleveland. We ended up losing by 2. Larry Bird at 31. Losing by 2. I needed to steal 1 in Boston. Now we have to win both in Houston. We do win Game 3. Oh, my goodness. We sucked in the fourth quarter. We scored 9 points. But, hey, a win is a win. We win by 6 points. We are now one game away from tying it back up. 
Come on, Clark Kellogg Terry. And we tie it up anyway. Let's go. We dropped 40 in the fourth quarter, and we are now tied up two games apiece. Also, didn't realize Steve Kerr is also in the 1988 draft class. So just plenty of former or future head coaches, which is kind of crazy. We're up 3 to 2. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. David Robinson, I love you. Mark Price, I love you. We're up three games to two. Game six in Houston. Oh my God. Boston just came back down three to two. Let's not let it happen here. Oh man, it's a, it's a close one. It's a close one. It's going to be a competitive one. They pulled away a little bit there. We're down by six, down by 10, oh, down by 12. Yeah, we ended up losing by 10. Damn it, man. We're going to a game seven. Robinson struggled six for 19. Eel shot three for 13. Kellogg shot, what was that? Two, three for nine. All right, game seven in Boston. This is not good. This is bad. This is very, very bad. Don't get blown out. Don't get blown out. I don't have a great feeling about this game. We have a solid first quarter. We don't have the worst second quarter in the world, but there it is. There it is, man. The worst third quarter imaginable. Oh my goodness. We were up three games to two, and you're going to make me lose. Oh my God. In blowout fashion in game seven. F off, 2K. F off. That's just, oh my God. Jay Vincent was our leading scorer. What the? F oh, yeah. Larry Bird wins finals MVP. So we only have one more year of this and we just lost in the finals, which is like, I'm fine with that. Wally Walker was in our rotation retires. There goes Artis Gilmore, Bill Walton, Bob McAdoo. Like I would have been fine. Mitch Kupchak retires as well. Michael Ray Richardson, like losing in round two, like we did. Even like, I'm fine losing in the finals because I didn't like, that's a great set for what we could be next year in the final year. And I know we have a good enough quarter to win it all. It just sucks because we were up three games to two. It was right there. Julius Irving's heading to the Hall of Fame. Gets his jersey retired by Philly. So, we're adding two new expansion teams. Oh, my God. Are we about to lose some players? Miami and Charlotte are being added um, as expansion teams. We're getting three officials. And the Warriors are getting new uniforms and a floor. So, yeah. Let's add these expansion teams. This is what the league uh, realignment is going to look like. Were the Heat ever in the Western Conference? Yeah. The Miami Heat were in the Midwest Division at this time, which is wild i did not know that so hey i'm glad this is like a history lesson for all of us as well like this is accurate this is what these standings were there are only two divisions and the central division had six teams the pacific division had six teams and yeah the heat were in the midwest that is crazy i mean why didn't you move i don't know like i don't really know what you would have done you could have maybe moved phil eh, moving philly to the midwest is weird but like i don't know no you would have moved like i don't know maybe detroit to the midwest and then just move miami to the central draft lottery time let's see what happens here the Suns have two top seven picks projected yeah at pick three and at pick seven the kings are there at two. Oh my god and the kings were pretty good last year so let's see Suns end up with number one i thought they had number two as well but that is the san antonio spurs we do have our first round pick at 22 so where are the the heat and the hornets and all of this did they not just get a first round pick well, that stinks. Staff signings. Uh, we'll keep William Murray around. He did just bring us to the NBA Finals. I'm signing Casey Jones. Look at his ratings as my post D coach, which is kind of a huge pickup. Yep. So we have to protect our players now. Unfortunately, I won't be able to keep everyone. So would I rather lose Wayman Tisdale or would I rather lose Craig Elo? I think I'd rather lose Tisdale. I think I just value Craig Elo and what he does for us. And we can maybe find a power forward that we could put next to David Robinson. So, yep, that is what we are going to do. We're not going to be able to keep... Oh, wait, can I keep everybody? No, I have to release at least one player. So, it's going to be Wayman Tisdale, unfortunately. So, anybody else? Like, any top guys not kept? Whoa. Moses Malone... No, he's a free agent. I was going to say. How was Moses Malone not kept? So, expansion draft. The Hornets with the number one pick. Take Kenny the Jetsmith. Wayman Tisdale goes number two. You have John uh, Con... Contract. I don't really know. Uh, Hot Rod Williams, her, uh, Reggie Williams, a couple guys that we know. Dennis Rodman wasn't kept. Oh, that's a huge pickup there for the Charlotte Hornets. Wow. Uh, yeah, that is huge. I really like the Hornets team with Hot Rod Williams, Reggie Williams, Kenny the Jet Smith. Yeah, they're going to be good kind of sooner than later. I think they definitely did better than the Miami Heat there. All right, there's a reason why I didn't want to move Craig Elo. I'm going to do this monster trade with the San Antonio Spurs, who have the second overall pick. They're rebuilding. George Gervin coming off a 27-point-per-game season, but he's 36 years old. So we are going all in next year. We acquire the Iceman for our first round pick our top second um a second down the line craig elo and we're getting a first round pick out of this trade as well so yeah let's do that the number one overall pick is mitch richmond to the phoenix suns and they take ronnie psych uh Cycoli there psychically uh going to san antonio they may have a dark future ahead of them rick smith's i mean yeah this wasn't the top like the best draft class in the world by any means oh there's the hornets so maybe they do get to pick like, where are the Miami Heat? Do the Miami Heat not have a first-round pick? So, yeah, the draft has concluded. Rex Chapman went to the Nuggets. 
All right, uh, Harvey Grant went there uh, 13, Ed Malone, sure. Uh, we did get Thomas Fields there in the second round. 69 overall, we'll sign him. Mark Price, obviously picking up his team option. J uh, John Jim Paxson, free agent, as well as Johnny Moore. Qualifying offers, let's give it to Cage. Uh, Piotrowski and Lester Porter. We definitely want to bring back Michael Cage, especially since I let go of Wayman Tisdale. So do we have any bird rights on anybody? Just Cage. Can I bring back? Um, damn, I was hoping to bring back, was it Jeff Malone or no, it was Jay Vince that I wanted to bring back. So right now we have about six guys. We bring back Cage. That's seven. Yeah, we definitely need to kind of make some good signings here. All right, so we are going to get Rookie Brown, who is a center. We're going to get Butch Carter, who's a wing. Uh, Geoff Houston goes to the, or Huston goes to the Lakers. Unfortunately, I don't think we can bring back Jay Vincent. Unless 2K's got some weird bird rights that I can kind of pull it off, I'd be so happy. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it sucks. So uh, Isaiah Thomas goes to the Spurs. Okay, well, the Spurs just completely turned their kind of franchise course around. Sidney Moncrief goes to the Knicks. Sorry about the glare on my face right now. Really nothing I can do. I kind of just have to like lean back at this point so it's not like directly in my face. John Stockton stays in Portland. Okay. We are going to bring back Michael Cage on a three-year deal. We're going to try to get Jeffrey Vaughn here as a 75 overall. Nice. And we get Hank McDowell as well. Jay Humphreys though. Is he going to get paid? We'll see. Yeah, so he ended up getting paid by the Miami Heat. Good, good, good. He got to pick some players up for their expansion team. All right, George Irvin regresses. I expected that. I just need him to put up 20 points per game for us. Him and Kellogg on the perimeter. That's filthy. I love this team right now. All right, so it is time for the 1989 season. We'll take a look at the lineup. It's definitely going to be this starting five, but I think the minutes are definitely going to be constructed a different way. Thanks, 2K. I'll make sure to update my game in a second. So yeah, the bench isn't going to be anything special. Maybe we are able to make a move at the deadline or something, but let's play Price, Kellogg, and Jervin at least 33 minutes a night. Honestly, I want to do 30, 40 each of them as well. And we can get Albert King and Jeff Malone some more minutes too. This is also the 1989 draft class, which has Tim Hardaway, Glenn Rice, Sean Kemp. Game one against the Nets on the road. We end up winning 107-98. I feel great about the season coming off a finals loss. I think we got better. Added the Iceman, uh, the Iceman in the offseason. So yeah, David Robinson and George Irvin on the team. Sorry, uh, Spurs fans, but it's going to look a little bit different. We ended up losing... So the expansion Miami Heat. Okay, Wayman Tisdale is just going to go off this year probably. All right, so we're currently 32-8 and eight through the team's first 40 games at the moment. We are the one seed in the Western Conference. We're 18-2 and two at home. Uh, we have the best record in the NBA as well. We played five more games than the Atlanta Hawks, which is kind of weird. David Robinson is the front runner for MVP. Haven't gotten an MVP yet, so that would be kind of cool. Rick Smith's... Uh, I feel like it should go to Mitch Richmond, Rookie of the Year. Scott Skiles up there for Sixth Man of the Year. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year, Kim Olajuwon. It would be sick if David Robinson won MVP and Depoy. 5.7 assists, 2.5 blocks, 1.1 steals. He's having an insane season. Most improved is, yeah, going to somebody with more playing time in Charlotte uh, or Miami and Jay Humphreys. Yeah, that's somebody we had at one point. Here have been the player stats, though. Uh, David Robinson winning the way. Then there's George Shervin. There's Mark Price, Clark Kellogg, Jeff Malone, Art, um, Albert King, Jeffrey Vaughn. I don't know if I'm going to make any trades at the deadline. I don't mind Michael Cage as well. He's a good shot blocker. I think he's a fine starting power forward. All right, so I'm going to trade Hank McDowell, Ricky Brown, and that Spurs first round pick we got in the offseason for William Bedford. More center depth, good player. Dude, we're just calling up the Phoenix Suns. They want draft picks here. William Bedford, um, they're looking off on him, and a second round pick is coming back here to San Antonio. So I feel like we have the depth now to go and make a championship run. All right, well, that's why you get some reinforcements at the big spot. Michael Cage dislocates his left patella. He's going to be out for the season. And we're 58 and 12 too, man. Um, I hope that we don't see any other injuries. Because sometimes it's just a domino effect. If one of them happens, then we just get a bunch. There it is. Mark Price. Day to day, though, at least. Car Kellogg breaks his right finger. All right. Well, you can play through it. William Bedford. Next strain. Don't have any injuries all year. But then once Michael Cage happens, now I get four in a row. Even with all those injuries, though, we are fully healthy for the playoffs besides Michael Cage. David Robinson wins MVP in his second year in the NBA. That is incredible, man. So the Rockets don't get a generational center and a Kim one in this ultimate rebuilding series it's going to be david robinson mitch richmond rookie of the year cliff levingston six man of the year kim olajuwon gets deep boy jay humphreys most improved william murray though coach of the year there we go and we get executive of the year as well david robinson who won mvp is all nba first team with larry bird carl malone clyde drexler and magic johnson second team you got alex english isaiah thomas on his new team, the San Antonio Spurs, Charles Barkley, James Worthy, and Akeem Olajuwon. Then you got Stockton, MJ, Jordan, Aguirre, uh, or Stockton, 
MJ, Wilkins, Aguirre, Pat Ewing. We get David Robinson with five centers on all defensive first team. And then you got four forwards and a guard on all defensive second team. And here were the top rookies. So yeah, we are the one seed in the Western Conference. The Atlanta Hawks are the one seed in the Eastern Conference with Carl Malone. David Robinson was our leading scorer. Craig Evo put up 13 and a half points in San Antonio. The number one scorer in the NBA was Alex English at 35 years old in Washington. Then you have Drexler, Wilkins, Keem, and then Magic Johnson. Rebounds per game, Akeem Olajuwon is by far the best rebounder in the league, man. He is unreal. Assists per game, John Stockton, number one. Price, number two. Let's go. Maybe Jay Humphreys got hurt, or he's not qualifying. No, he's there. He had 7.6. Steals per game, we see that Ron Harper is number one. MJ is number four. And blocks per game, David Robinson is number two because Akeem Olajuwon insane season all right so the bench yeah is going to consist of phil hubbard and jeffrey vaughn who are both fine players for us each are going to get 15 minutes a night william bedford's getting about 20 minutes a night who i'm very happy with that pickup jeff malone 27 we're going to move clark kellogg to the four david robinson's obviously playing the five albert king is now a starter let's get george shervin some more minutes and i gotta get mark price some more minutes as well so maybe i won't play jeff malone as much or Albert King. Yeah, we could do just that because I want to give him at least 33 minutes a night. So, round one against Phoenix. They have Mo Cheeks, Mitch Richmond, Scotty Pippen, Jason Tatum. Not that Jason Tatum, Ricky Brown. Okay, we should beat this team. They're still kind of like rebuilding. Larry Nance, their best player, is hurt. We win game one by a total of 11 points. Mark Price with 16 assists. Game two, we pick up the victory. Game three, we win in five. Always forget that it's in five. In game two, we ended up winning by 11. And then in game three, we ended up just winning by two points. But hey, a win is a win. In those three games, David Robinson and Mark Price both averaged 18.7 points. Mark Price averaged 14 assists. Wait, what game did he have more than 14 assists in? Game one, 14. Game two, did he have 14 as well? He had 16. And then in game three, he had 12. So we're taking on Portland, a team that we beat last year. In the conference semis, right? It wasn't in the conference finals. Uh, John Stockton, Clyde Drexler still there. It's an insane duo. You have Sacramento, who we beat last year in the conference finals. That's the team we beat. And the Seattle Supersonics with Jack Sigma, Tom Chambers, Kenny Walker, Joe Dumars, Gus Williams. It's a good team out there. You got Cleveland versus Philly. An eight seed upsetted the one seeded Atlanta Hawks. They still have Moses Malone. No more Julius Irving. Jim Paxson, Fat Lever in the backcourt. Okay. And then you got Cleveland there, um, who still have Dominique. Cliff Robinson and Jeff Ruland. It's a nasty front court. Marcus Johnson. And then you have the Knicks and the Celtics. First time we're kind of seeing the Knicks in this. Uh, they have Johnny Moore, Sidney Moncrief, Xavier McDaniel, Frank Whitehead, Olden Polly Nice. Bernard King hurt. Um, no, they just no longer have Bernard King. I don't think he retired last year. No, Bernard King is on the Charlotte Hornets. Wow. All right. That was a huge pickup for them. Here we go. Game one against the Trailblazers. We end up picking up the victory by three points at home. 11 assists for Mark Price. 13 rebounds for David Robinson. We go up 2-0. We win by 17. Clark Kellogg just pulls out random 17 rebound performances. He's averaging 12 rebounds at the power forward spot for us in five games. Three. Uh, we end up losing 130-108. Drexler and Stockton combined for 67 points. Good Lord. Game four. We do win, though. Let's go. We're up three games to one. Jay Vincent with 19 points. Okay. Uh, the revenge series for him. 35 and 25 for Robinson and Price. And we are going to win in five games. Boom. We win by 18. 17 assists for Mark Price, who also has some stinker shooting performances. But we'll take it because we just won. Are we taking on Seattle or Sacramento? It is Seattle. They come back down three to two. And then you have Boston Philly there in the Eastern Conference Finals. All right, here we go. Game one against Seattle. We are the better team. We end up winning by one. David Robinson with a triple double. Double double for Kellogg and Mark Price as well. Game two. We pick up the victory. Robinson with 26 and 16. Price 24 and 14. Uh, George Durbin hasn't been as good as I was hoping him to be. Like the regression has definitely hit him hard this season. It's fine though. I just want to win a championship. Clark Kellogg's shin splints. He could play through it, but that is a brutal injury to play through. But we end up winning by 37 points. We are dominating Seattle right now. 14 rebounds for Robinson. We've lost one playoff game. One playoff game. Wow. We're 11 and 1 going into the NBA Finals. 16 assists for Mark Price. 15 rebounds for Robinson, 22, 14, and 7 for Kellogg with shin splints. Are we getting a rematch against Boston? Yes, we are. They beat Philly in 7. They won by 5 at home. Bird had 32. Malone had 36. And just looking at here at the playoff stats, we got Robinson averaging 21, 13, 5.5, and, and 3 blocks. 
Price averaging 20, 13, and 1. Mitch Richmond was putting up the most points per game, but like Larry Bird, probably the most impressive at 17 games played. Rockets, Boston, rematch of last year. Are they going to beat us two years in a row? We win game one. Let's go by 14 points. That is what I'm talking about. Or excuse me, 16 points. Can't do math. Double double for Mark Price. Robinson with 28, 8, and 5. Game number two. Car Kellogg's fully healthy. We're up 2-0, guys. We are dominating the playoffs right now. Maybe getting Casey Jones as an assistant was huge. I don't know if he was ever a Celtics coach, but he played for them. We lose game three now. Oh my God, by one point. Damn it. We were one bucket away from going up 3-0. Price and Robinson played great. Game four. Oh boy, we have a series on our hands. Don't tell me Boston is going to own me. LA, the Lakers, own me in the last video. Does Boston own me here? Don't do it. Okay, we're up three games to two, but deja vu. We were up three to two last year. Game six on the road. Oh boy, are we going to lose this? We're down by 12 at the end of the first. We have a solid second, a solid third. We're right back in it. Terrible start to the fourth as I say that. Down by 11, down by 10. And folks, we are going to be going to a game seven. They beat us 112-104 in Boston. We know how game seven went last year. Is it going to happen again to Mark Price and David Robinson? Are they going to be the new Carl Malone and John Stockton? They can never get a championship together. Let's see. Don't get blown out like we did last year, please. Terrible first quarter. No. 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 Are you kidding me? Wait. Oh, my God. We came back. We're down by three. Oh, my God. I thought it was done. I thought we were cooked. All right. Let's watch this live. Let's watch this. I am nervous, man. I am nervous. Let's see what is going to happen here. I thought we were getting blown out, and it's literally two years in a row. I get blown out after going up three games to two, losing game six by somewhat of a, like, not a close game, and then just getting blown out in game seven. We do not have the ball. Scott Skiles with the ball here, guarded by Mark Price. David Robinson is in. Good. Kicks it over, I think, Marcus Johnson. He pulls up with the right hand. No good. The Admiral with the rebound. Let's go. Kick it up. George Jervin, the Iceman, with the ball. Come on. Find, find him trailing. Find oh, my God. You had somebody in the paint 35 albert king don't love him with the ball in his hands mark price i'm a fan of him but he's guarded by larry bird look at the size difference out there mark price you're not gonna be able to get by him do not turn it over call for a screen or something four seconds on the shot clock why don't you kick it to robinson there you are that's hubbard oh my god hubbard misses it i thought that was robinson for a second all right well we're down by three with a minute left larry bird kicks over to scott skiles oh my god that was so huge we got the stop we needed to score there this is bad this is so bad. Marcus Johnson gets in the paint. He pulls up. He hits that. That might be it, folks. All right, here we go. I, I say we need a three, but we don't. We just need a quick, like, a, t a quick two. Just, you know, get it within 15 seconds on the shot clock, okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> Why did we call timeout right away? And we have, like, three more remaining 2K. I swear to God, if you're going to do this, like, shit to me where you're just going to constantly call timeouts, I'm just going to hop in myself because I'm not sitting through three more full. That is too frustrating. All right. Uh, Mark Price is 24 and 8. Why is Robinson in at the 4? I don't really know. Kick it to David Robinson, please. Or, or just give it to Mark Price. Let's uh, get Robinson to post up here on Kevin McHale, who's like 50 at this point. Come on, Robinson. Get inside on him. Really? You can't get inside? All right, kick it back out to Mark Price. Ah, this is so stupid. I should have just shot it because mm, I'm losing time. I'm losing time. Kick it back to Robinson. Robinson, dunk that, please. All right, we don't need to foul. Maybe if it goes to somebody that, like, is not a good free throw shooter, but I don't know who, I like, is a good free throw shooter or not. I'm sure, like, everybody on the floor besides Robert Parrish is. So, you know what? Let's get Robert Parrish to the line. Let's get Robert Parrish to the line. Can we double team? Let's double team. Let's double team. Come on. There we go. Oh, I thought I got a steal there. All right, foul him, foul him. Oh, my God. Well, I played that horribly. Mark Price for three. No good. And the Houston Rockets lose back-to-back -back NBA Finals. Well, yeah, I guess I probably should have fouled. Uh, I kind of choked that towards the end. Damn, back-to-back -back finals L's. This one was, this one hurts, man. And that's the thing. I won't be controlling this team again. It's one of the downsides here of the Ultimate Rebuilding Series. I'll never get revenge. Last video, the Lakers owned me this time. The Boston Celtics. I hate them, man. I hate them. I kind of want to take an Eastern Conference team next, which we will because we did two Western Conference teams. Oh, my God. That just hurts so much. And yeah, the Boston Celtics have won the NBA Finals. Larry Bird is your Finals MVP. All right, well, that is it for episode two of the Ultimate Rebuilding Series. We watched the Sixers beat the Mavericks, and then the Celtics beat us twice in the Finals. This so was a fun team, man. David Robinson, Mark Price, Clark Kellogg, the Iceman, Jeff Malone, Albert King, William Bedford. 
It's been real. So I think it would be fun to maybe take control of one of the expansion teams in the next video. Like I say, it's like like I said, I don't think I'm going to do one of the Western Conference teams. I'm just kind of going through them here. Yeah, the the Blazers, man, sick backcourt. If they never make it to the finals, that'd be kind of crazy. The Warriors have been pretty irrelevant in this uh, series so far. I feel like uh, the Sixers not going to do them. They won a championship in this video. Milwaukee, we could build around Charles Barkley for sure. Uh, if you guys want to see that, let me know. The Bullets uh, with an aging Alex English, Kiki Vanderway, Ron Harper. The Bulls with the Kimo Lodge one and Chris Mullen. That one might be a little bit too easy since Elijah one is already so good. The Cavs have Dominique Wilkins, Jeff Rowan, Marcus Johnson. They have Marcus Johnson, so it was a different Johnson on Boston. Sorry about that. But yeah, Cleveland, I think they are kind of just too good right now. Uh, same with Boston. Don't even want to see that team in my face. Clippers have Chelly, uh, Kelly Chupaka. Look at that. He ended up leaving Washington side with them. Uh, Carl Malone in Atlanta. Byron Scott. Uh, Miami does have Jay Humphrey, so we could actually build around him uh, with him as a starting point guard. Let me know if you guys want to see this with the Miami Heat in the next video. The team isn't great. We'd see some familiar faces, um, and that could be fun. Charlotte has Bernard King, Kenny Smith, uh, Hot Rod, and Reggie Williams. And... Dennis Rodman, correct, who I swore they had Dennis Rodman. Maybe they traded him away. Magic Johnson um, on the Jazz, Patrick Ewing on the Kings, Sidney Moncrief in the New York Knicks. We could do the New York Knicks as well. Like, they aren't, like, too much of a special team, but they are pretty decent. Not doing the Lakers. Dallas Mavericks, not doing. Like I said, I do want to do an Eastern Conference team. We could build around Reggie Miller in New Jersey. Don't know what they're doing to him after that rookie season. Denver is nothing too crazy at the moment. Terry Cummings in Indiana. Uh, I mean, Terry Porter would be fun to build around as well, because I think he's really good. Detroit's got Mark Aguirre, Bill Lambeer. This is like the post-Isaiah Thomas era, so that could be fun also. And just these were the standings from this past season, with the Warriors being the worst team in the league. And in the East, if you just want to see, we got like the Pistons, Nets, and Bucks. Wow, the Bucks with Charles Barkley were that bad. Hornets made the playoffs. So yeah, we could do them. Uh, I'm not sure, like, yeah, we could, like, drift Sean Kemp, Glenn Rice, somebody like that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Drop a like if you guys did enjoy episode two of the Ultimate Rebuilding series. Let me know also in the comments anything you want to see different in this series as well, because we got a lot more episodes left, so I'm down to change anything as we go along the way. Drop a like if you did enjoy. I love you guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.